good morning from Bar Cecil, and we are going to take you inside this classic Casablanca type restaurant lounge bar. This is like entering a different time, uh, full of art, full of interesting artifacts based on uh, Cecil Barton, which I'm going to bring you a little information on early in this episode. But we're going to talk to the owner, Nate, one of the owners today, and show you some of the ambiance, food, and cocktails this interesting new restaurant bar lounge in Palm Springs has to offer. It's new, it's exciting, uh, not cheap, it's a little pricey, but really good. Really good and such a unique experience. I think everybody should come on down and check it out. And thank you for watching. And let's go inside this unique Casablanca type, 1940s, 1950s. I can see Humphrey Bogart coming in with a cigarette talking to Ava Gardner. It's that type of place. As you'll see, thank you for watching David of the Desert. How's it going? Entering Bar Cecil is like entering a bar right out of Casablanca. It's a love letter to Cecil Beaton's vision of life and art. And just who is Cecil Beaton? He was born in London in 1904 and showed an early interest in photography and arts. He was taught by his nanny to use a Kodak 3A camera way back in 1904. His first big break was getting his portrait of Duchess of Malfi published in Vogue magazine. Cecil Beaton eventually left London and moved to New York where he built his reputation. He signed a contract with Condé Nast Publications to take photos for them for several years. After World War II ended, Vogue magazine commissioned Beaton to photograph a number of celebrities, including Lady Diana Cooper and Greta Garbo. Beaton always admired Garbo and they had an affair together in the 1940s. He also photographed her extensively and his photos of her were published in major magazines of the time. In 1964, Beaton was given the chance to design the costumes for the film production of My Fair Lady. This was one of his best projects and he won an Oscar for the costume designs. He was particularly fond of Audrey Hepburn, who he admired greatly. He said of her, she was remarkably disciplined, her memory never at fault. She appeared on the set day after day and she can give the same performance over and over again. Beaton left behind a legacy that influenced fashion photographers, portrait photographers, and photojournalists alike. Indeed, Cecil Beaton was ahead of his time, and the theme of the restaurant is very much modeled after him and his work. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm with Nate Van Enter, who's the general manager and partner of Bar Cecil. I want to say, Nate, congratulations Thank on this uh, beautiful new restaurant. This is so cool. To me, it's like entering, I don't know, Casablanca. Humphrey Bogart should be here. Is that cool? Um, and I like, why don't you ask you, what was the concept behind the restaurant? Yeah, the concept originally was uh, kind of a love letter to Cecil Beaton, um, and his style was really kind of the inspiration behind the design. Uh, really extravagant and right on the verge of over the top. With, uh, the, the way that he kind of lived was the inspiration. So, you know, just riding that fine line of uh, excess and, and uh, pleasing to the eye, lots of patterns, lots of colors. Like I said, when I walk into this restaurant, I feel like, again, Humphrey Bogart should be here. It's really stylish, it's interesting. That was a conscious decision to make it kind of like European, uh, like definitely out yeah. of this world, out of, not so Americana, but European style. For sure, inspired by lots of like Parisian and, and French bistros where with the wicker chairs and kind of the laid back atmosphere. Um, we wanted to get very good and attentive service, but also casual bistro style. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing, kind of riding the line right in between. That's right, I know. 
you know, it's funny, they have like, why not? The menu has uh, presenting, shall we? It's like a really creative thing to get people's mind going in terms of the menu, right? Absolutely. So that was, again, a conscious decision to get people's creativity. Yeah, it was all based around uh, Chef Gabriel Wu, who's a, a local kid, and kind of what we found him and latched onto him, and his food is kind of what shines. Everything else is based to support that. Um, and we just kind of had some fun. We call them winks, just like little things, the way the menu's designed, um, some of the atmosphere. There's a typo actually on our awning. Uh, it says steaks and frites. It was supposed to say steak frites. And we just went with it. We're like, let's just keep it. Because uh, it's kind of clever and it's something to talk about. And we put it on the menu and now it's our thing. So right. stuff like that. And as far as the menu, what do you guys recommend? Any top dishes you can recommend? Or do you Definitely, yeah. This the steaks and frites, uh, the kind of the week there is one of his, his signature dishes. Uh, the pork chop has been pork unbelievably chop. well received. I've had it. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's got a light smoke on it. Really, really great. Um, you can't go wrong. His food is unbelievable. He's, we're really lucky. Yeah, I agree. I had the chicken and the pork chop with a friend of mine. and so tasty and it's really, really good food. And they have great appetizer as well. Um, as far as, um, you know, what do you, would you like to say to the audience who's watching about why they should come to Port Cecil? Um, I think it's just, it's an, the overall experience. It's, it's kind of overwhelming to the eye with lots of uh, patterns and those little weeks. Uh, they're in the design everywhere. It's a beautiful space, but our goal was really to make it a, a neighborhood where you learn people's drinks and people's names. And, you know, there's so many locals here that we've come to know and that have been here numerous times as well as tourists. And, we just want to welcome everybody and make them feel like this is a little tucked in bistro, kind of like the ones in Paris. So. It really is in Paris. In fact, if you go to the bathroom here, it's like an experience. It's not a regular bathroom. There's like old radios with like Edith Peel up and playing or something. It's kind of, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's totally separate experience once you walk into the bathroom and you walk out. So. Right. I yeah. love the music and it's just so interesting. The design of it is amazing. So just for the design alone, it's worth coming for a drink, but the food is even better. So I highly recommend Bar Cecil, and I want to say congrats to Nate and your partners, the owners, or group of like four people, I think. Yeah, yeah, there's five of us total, including the chef. He's, a, he's one of the partners as well. Okay. Couldn't be happier. And every time at five o'clock when this bar opens, the bar's packed. So come here early because people love this bar, and it is unique and stylish, and I just think it's a wonderful spot. Thank you so much. All right, Nate. Appreciate it. Best of luck. Avery the Desert at Bar Cecil, just relaxing, and uh, this is a great spot. I uh, urge you guys to come on down to enter a different world of relaxation and old world charm. He's looking at you, kid, in front of Bar Cecil. Casablanca, kind of. When you enter Bar Cecil, you enter a different world. It's that unique of a place, and that's why I wanted to profile it, to highlight um, uh, this really interesting, cool, relaxed, fun uh, bar restaurant that's new. So I recommend Bar Cecil, and thank you for watching my channel. A great new addition. Uh, to the Coachella Valley in Palm Springs and they bring class they bring good food they bring an upscale vibe to Palm Springs and it's unique and they uh, Cecil Barton rest in peace is his legacy lives on in this glittering new upscale restaurant here in Palm Springs David Desert thank you for watching if you like this episode, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me as I bring you more good stuff from the Coachella Valley.